Hey there. We've been talking about Obsidian in the last few videos, which is a note-taking app that a lot of people really like. They use it for personal knowledge management, general productivity, and specifically how to make a simple system in Obsidian. Now, one of the major strengths of Obsidian is the ability to link notes together, which people get really excited about. It's pretty cool. You can put links into your notes and then you get you know, your graph view where things are connected to each other. And people can really go crazy with this. And you see these graph views that are like these giant interconnected spider webs. And it's pretty cool, but there are downsides to using links, which we're gonna discuss in this video, including one shift in thinking and your tactics that can help you get the benefits of links while minimizing the risk that things just get too complicated. So let's dive into it. So before we dive in, I wanna talk a little bit about who this video is for. There's a lot of content about Obsidian out there on YouTube. A lot of it focuses around a very specific way to use Obsidian. A lot of people are using it as a place to put their ideas, to brainstorm, and to connect ideas together so that they can have emergent thinking where ideas kind of connect each other and you, you're able to put things together. It's like a creative engine. A good example of this is Nick Milo, and his channel is huge, but he has a very specific way he uses Obsidian. And that works for Nick, and it works for a lot of people in creative fields that need that kind of creative engine and and maybe that's how you want to use it that's not what we're going to talk about here but i think that a lot of people don't need that a lot of people just want a place to put their notes and then find the information later and content like nick's and some of the other stuff that's out there gives the impression to some people that like if all i want is a quick way to like store things and like maybe obsidian's not for me i actually think you can use obsidian and you can get a lot of great value out of it for a simpler use case. And that's what we're gonna talk about here is more of a simple, like put information in, take information out kind of approach to Obsidian. And this is one way we can do it is by really thinking intentionally about how we use links. So let's dive into where the pitfalls are. And the first one is one that I definitely fell prey to. A lot of people get into this, especially when you first discover Obsidian, you, you get in there, you start linking notes together and you open up the graph view, for instance, and then you're like, oh, yeah, see how it's connected. It's really cool to see. But then you're looking at the graph view and you're like, oh, well, this is connected to that. It should also be connected to this and it should be connected to this and that should be connected. And you're trying to optimize all the connections and you're creating links for the sake of creating links. And I call this pretty graph syndrome, where you're like looking at your graph view and you're trying to make it exactly, like everything's connected, you know, pristinely the way it should be. And that is sort of fun and interesting, but it isn't delivering value or making me more productive, right? Now I'm spending all this time like preening and grooming my vault instead of using the information in it to be more productive. And that's that's a trap, right? And I think it's, it's easy to get into that if you, when you first start discovering how cool it is to link things together. The second pitfall is a little bit subtle in, in that it really has to do with the complexity of the categorization in your vault. Links are one of three ways to categorize your information in your Obsidian vault. You can link your notes together, you can put them in folders, and you can tag them. And those are the three basic ways you can slice your notes um, into groups. And so you could get really complicated with this and, and create multiple dimensions upon which you're you know, dividing up or relating your notes together. You've got folders and then tags that pull things out of folders and links that link things together. And the more you do that, like it can be really powerful, but it also creates complexity. And now you have to think about, okay, well, how, where do I put it? And well, how do I link it? And how do I tag it? And where do I put, and the more layers and dimensions you add, the more complicated it becomes. And then it becomes onerous to maintain and to make sure that the way you're using it is consistent. So I've found over the years that less is more that just adds complexity. And we're trying to reduce complexity, make it simpler. Hey, we're gonna get to that one strategy that's gonna simplify your use of links next. But if you are getting value, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment about how you're using links in your vault. We'll get right back to it now. But am I saying that you shouldn't ever put links in? Like, what are we saying here? I I'm not saying you should never put links. I actually think links are great and there's a lot of value. So how do we get the benefits while minimizing the risk that we're gonna make it too complicated? Well, it's that one simple mindset shift, one simple question you can ask yourself and it's this. Will this link improve the value of this note, this one note that I'm looking at? Does it improve the value of that for my use of it? A great example of this and how I use it is with checklists. I have, for example, a checklist for managing my budget and my finances each month. And inside that checklist, there are links, both to websites, I link to all of the financial websites I use to manage my, my money, and then I have a um, 
link, I have links to other notes. I have links to say uh, my investment strategy and how I want to allocate my investments. And I also have links to usernames and hints for my passwords for all of those financial accounts. That adds value to that checklist because everything's in one place. I can get to all the stuff without, you know, fishing through my vault and it really does enhance the value of that checklist. So generally, I try to default to like, no, this isn't gonna add value. It's guilty until proven innocent in this case. Like, I'm not gonna add a link unless I'm pretty convinced that I need that link in that note. So this is just one way that you can totally narrow down how you're gonna use links. Um, because part of the challenge with using Obsidian and, and keeping it simple is like, there's so many possibilities. You can do so many different things with it. It's like, how are you gonna use it? And so having that one question, how will this improve the value of the note I'm using, is gonna help you to create a more simple, coherent system. So that's essentially the video today. If you guys liked it, um, certainly share in the comments, like how are you using links? Um, there, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and I'm not saying that there's right or wrong, I'm just offering one way to do it. So I wanna hear how you use them. Remember to like the video, subscribe, and uh, we will see you in the next one. But in the meantime, you can check out these earlier videos where we talked about plugins and how to use fewer of them and get more out of them. So take care and see you next time.